Phillips Petroleum Company is an American corporation with global name recognition. The company headquarters are here in Bartlesville in the heart of the oil-rich country of northeastern Oklahoma. Company founder Frank Phillips began this beautiful classic home for his family in 1908. I'm Barbara Cohenauer. Stay tuned as Focus on Art visits the Frank Phillips home. My guest today is Sue Lacey, Sue's director here at the Frank Phillips Home. Sue, welcome to Focus on Art. Thank you, Barbara. Really appreciate your being with us today. It's a pleasure. Now, this house is a property of the Oklahoma Historical Society. Is that right? That's right. Um, the house was built, as you said, in 1908-1909 by Frank and Jane Phillips, and they lived here until their deaths. Their granddaughter inherited the house, and when she decided to move away in 1973, she gave the house and its contents to the Oklahoma Historical Society. So it was really a wonderful gift. Oh, absolutely. And what an opportunity for the people here in northeastern Oklahoma to be able to come to this house and really see how the Phillips lived. It's a real insight into life in the early part of the century. Yes, it truly is. And the building now is on the National Register of Historic Places. Who was the architect for this house? A noted Bartlesville architect, Walton Everman, designed the house for the Phillips, and I've been told that he modeled it after the Brown Mansion in Coffeyville. Okay. Well, now I mentioned that it was a classic design, so we might want to just take a quick look before we go inside uh, and point out to our viewers some of the design motifs that would make this uh, house so typical of a classic design. Well, we start at the top with the pediments that are topped by the uh, tile, red tile roof. And then as we move down, we see the ionic columns that are so graceful. The uh, porch on the second floor was formerly closed in and uh, screened in. And Mrs. Phillips often sat out there in the early morning and in the late afternoon. She loved, she loved to be out there. All right, and then as we move down to the lower porch, of course, we've got a beautiful, graceful doorway with leaded glass there. Once again, the ionic capitals on the pilasters and the engaged columns. Uh, then you move over to the windows on either side. Is that marble above the, above the windows? Yes, uh-huh. Quite a bit of marble was used on the facing of the house and on the interior. Okay, it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, so gracious and yet so traditional. I think this is real typical of houses in the early part of the 20th century that were created by by wealthy Americans all across the country and that they, re, they got out of that, uh, what shall we say, overly ornate Victorian style of the 19th century and really turned to something that was more formal and more traditional. So it really was just what was happening in architecture all across the country. Yes, and in Bartlesville this was of course an outstanding house when it was built and um, Mr. Phillips promised that if people would build up and down the street he would see that no streetcar ever ran up and down Cherokee Avenue, that the street would be paved, that there would be fire hydrants and lights on every corner. It was going to be a classy neighborhood and it does, it is one of the most prestigious neighborhoods in Bartlesville with lovely architecture up and down it. Great. Well, let's go inside and take a look at this house. All right. Welcome, Barbara. Well, it's certainly nice to be in out of the crisp fall air. That's true. This is such a lovely entryway, I think. Um, <clears throat> the uh, wood that you see is is Philippine mahogany. It was um, purchased from Mrs. Phillips' father, John Gibson. He was a banker in Creston, Iowa, but he also owned mahogany forests in the Philippines. And so the lovely mahogany wood that you see throughout the house uh, was purchased by the Phillips from him. Now I understand that this is the favorite place for Bartlesville brides to come and have their photographs made. It makes a wonderful setting. Okay. Let me introduce you to the Phillips. 
Okay. We okay. have several pictures of them here. This is their wedding photograph. They were in their 20s here. And then this is a picture of each of them when they're in their uh, mid-years. It seems to me that this particular picture of Frank is one that we see used a lot. Yes. Uh, it's almost his official photograph. <laughs> That's right. And Jane was a beautiful lady. Yes, very elegant. They made an elegant couple. And this is so Victorian to be dressed in black, I think, on your, on your wedding portrait. All right. Now we're in the living room. And it, actually, this is called the music room. It, and you can see, for obvious reasons, we have uh, Victrola over there. And over here, we have a Weber piano, which was a pianola, a player piano. It's a little out of tune now. But it was state-of-the-art player piano and uh, was purchased by the Phillips around 1910. It's an extraordinary musical instrument and my hope is to someday restore it. The player parts of it have been removed, so it would really be nice to be able to, to restore it and have it functioning again. In this corner you see the uh, model that was done by Brian Baker uh, and you have the larger-than-life statue out at Willow Rock in the Rotunda area. Okay, right. Now as we walk away from the piano, of course we come to a painting by a very well-known American artist. Yes, that's our most valuable painting. It's by John Singer Sargent. And it is not a family member. It's simply a picture that the Phillips liked and they had in their townhouse in New York City. And when uh, they uh, no longer wanted it there, they brought it here to, to, uh, to the house in Bartlesville. Well, it's certainly a beautiful example of John Singer Sargent's. As we leave the music room, we head towards the dining room. Uh, and once again, it's certainly an opulent room. Yes, it's set right now um, for an informal luncheon. We have um, a gas fireplace, of course, because <laughs> Mr. Phillips was an oil man. Uh, and you have this lovely, massive furniture uh, this table actually extends to serve 24 people. We have it set, as I said, for an informal luncheon right now, but soon we'll be changing it, extending the table, and making it very festive for the holiday season. And now, is the uh, place setting here, is, did this belong to the Phillips yes, family? Yes, uh-huh. Everything on the table was theirs. Okay. They love to entertain, and they love to have dinner parties, and when they had more than 24 people, they set tables up all through the house. All right. Well, this is certainly a grand room, and I love the, uh, the high wainscoting here. Now, if we go back through the music room and cross the front hall, we'll be in the <coughs> library. That's right. One of the most interesting things about this library is that it's Jane's library and not Frank's. That's right, Barbara. It's not a show library. Jane really used these books and read them. Um, this actually was part of a, a major remodel that took place in the 30s. You can notice the beautiful ornate ceiling and the wooden carvings along the, the top of the wall. Um, the remodel was designed by Edward Bueller Delk, a noted architect who practiced mostly in Kansas City but came to Oklahoma and uh, designed Philbrook oh, and, sure. and uh, Philmont and the Phil Tower in Tulsa. Well, this is certainly a lovely addition to the house. Uh, they added 12 feet onto this room and, in a very classy manner, had an, this excavated down, so it's a foot and a half lower than any place else in the house. Wow, I can't imagine doing that excavation <laughs> after the house was built. Well, the room is full of treasures. Yes, and one of our chief treasures is the copy of the Gutenberg Bible, which was Mrs. Phillips, and you can see how lovely it is. Very unusual piece. We also have a lovely piece that the granddaughter left behind. It's a Tiffany lamp, and uh, so exquisite that we've left it as part of the collection, even though it was not originally the Phillips. Barbara, there's something on the other side of the room that I really want to show you. Okay. And I have an interesting story that goes with it. Uh, during the 1930s, when they did this remodel, that was the time of the Lindbergh kidnappings, and everyone was quite fearful about kidnappings. Frank Phillips, and now we have kind of a creaking door, had this compartment built in. There was one on this side of the room and one on the other side of the room. This is just large enough for a person to fit in there. 
and there was a telephone in one side and a communication system in the other, an intercom through the house. Um, actually, Pretty Boy Floyd did try to kidnap the Phillips' granddaughter. She was on her way home from Garfield School, which is about four blocks from here, and uh, they tried to grab her and she struggled loose and ran home. And the Phillips went out to Willow Rock Ranch. Henry Wills, an outlaw, called Frank Phillips and he had been contacted by Pretty Boy Floyd and had talked to Henry Wills about the uh, Phillips and their normal procedures and Henry Wills tipped Frank Phillips off and he told them, go out to Willow Rock and hole up until I tell you to come out. And so they did, they went out to Willow Rock, they armed themselves, they had guards stationed all around Willow Rock and there's only one entrance into Willow Rock. Pretty Boy Floyd pulled up at 2, 2 a.m. in the morning, and uh, when he couldn't get in, he left, and he left the, the territory, and uh, and the Phillips weren't kidnapped, but... What an exciting story. Now, I've yes. heard that one before. <laughs> now we'll go up into the sunroom. This was part of the other edition, the other remodel that took place in 1917, and this was a favorite room of the Phillips. Uh, Mr. Phillips often had board meetings here in the morning before he would uh, head downtown to work and he'd have his, his executives come here and meet with him. Well, it's a wonderful, light, friendly room. I bet Jane enjoyed this one too. Yes, lots of bridge parties in here. Okay. Um, we have a wonderful picture here by Albert Kupp. Uh, he's a Dutch painter and noted for his cows and landscapes and so that's one of our treasures. Well, certainly an important 17th century Dutch painter, too. Uh, probably no other examples, really, from that school in this area, probably not even in the state. One other thing I think we should probably point out is this beautiful credenza. This looks to me like it's probably Italian. And uh, is it really a handsome piece? Very gracious with the painting and so forth. Now, if we leave this area, the, one of the most interesting areas in the house is this wonderful kitchen. Let's take a look. Four-room kitchen. It's done to a typical 1930s genre. You see the old 1930s refrigerator here. Right. And over here we have this Roper stove, which is original to the house, and this wonderful porcelain sink. This was the area they took the food in. And this is the area that they prepared the food. And then we'll see the area where they serve the food, the butler's pantry over here. Okay, and this is a wonderful butler's pantry. So convenient. You can see the Phillips tray set out. They had breakfast in bed every morning. That's Mr. Phillips' uh, china, the blue, and Mrs. Phillips is the um, purpley color. Um, and then you see the birdcage. They had a parrot that lived in that porcelain birdcage. <laughs> that was kind of close constraint for a parrot. For a parrot, yes. I wonder if they let him out on special occasions. Oh, I think so. All Probably right. ruled the roost. And then we have that lovely leaded glass window that's at the at far end of the uh, pantry that's so beautiful. Now we get to go upstairs. And there's really a lot to see up here, Barbara. There are five bedrooms and five bathrooms. Quite unusual for the era. Um, everyone called them Aunt Jane and Uncle Frank, and I'd like to show you their bedrooms. And I'd also like to point out this is the second of three floors, okay. and this is a good time to mention the elevator. Okay. She, she gave him an elevator. When they were getting elderly, she had that installed because they were having difficulty with the stairs. And he gave her a greenhouse, which is out on the grounds. And it's, lovely addition that we really enjoy here. Just small little gifts. Just small little gifts. Well, let's go visit Aunt Jane in her bedroom. Okay. This room, Barbara, was redone during the 1930s um, with the Delk restoration, the, the Delk remodel, I rather said. And you can see how lovely the plaster work is. Um, and how feminine this room is, done in such soft tones. We have uh, beautiful painted furniture, a match set throughout the room. And in here, this is not usually on the tour, but I'd like to show you. We have her little closet room. 
Um, here's an old fashioned hair dryer, right up to date at the time. Her nylon stockings, her exercise machine, and later in life she got a little heavy, so she really did need to have something like this. <laughs> okay. And here's her safe for her valuables, uh, hidden away. Well, this room is beautifully appointed. Yes, and they love the best of everything. You can see these silk sheets that that she slept on, trimmed in this lovely, exquisite lace. This delicate pink, once again, very mm, feminine. Very touch feminine. Here. And over here, you'll see her little chair. This was her chair as a child in Creston, Iowa, her little rocking chair, and it was always here in her room. Um, Above her bed is a picture of her mother, Matilda Gibson. Jane, as I said, had a great love for reading that she really got from her father, but she was very, very fond of her mother. And the town that the Phillips were from, um, Creston, Iowa, is where they were married and where they came to Bartlesville from. Uh, there's an interesting story about that. The uh, town wanted to have a Carnegie Library. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Carnegie didn't build one in Creston, and so the Phillips said, don't be so disappointed, we'll take care of it for you. They built a library in Creston, and they named it uh, the Matilda Gibson Library. And recently, I was there just this summer, actually, and it's a charming little library, and uh, what a truly wonderful remembrance to a mother. Well, what a remembrance for a person who particularly likes to read. Yes. Now this is where Jane spent a lot of her reading time on this chaise lounge. She would sit here and read and uh, pass her time doing some of her uh, uh, needlepoint work. She loved to do needlepoint work. She loved to entertain. She was a great hostess, both in New York, as I said, that Phillips had spent quite a lot of time in New York City. They spent about half a year in New York City. About, Is that right? about half their time, Mr. Phillips doing lots of negotiations and lots of business on Wall Street. And Mrs. Phillips would accompany him up there. She would entertain up there and in Bartlesville and, of course, be an elegant hostess out at Willow Rock. Um, she liked to play cards, embroider, as I said, and do stitch work. And uh, she loved to sit, lay here and read. In fact, this was one of her favorite pieces of furniture. And after she passed away, um, they had her laid out at the funeral home on this chaise lounge. On this pink chaise. Now, I don't tell everybody that. I especially don't tell children that because I'm afraid that they'll be <laughs> <laughs> rather spooked by that. Um, I mentioned when we were outside that uh, Mrs. Phillips spent a lot of time on her balcony. And this is the the uh, window door that she used to, to go out on the balcony and sit. All right. And is this their, their son? Yes. This is a picture of their son. Uh, and actually up there is a picture when he was a younger little boy. And this is a picture of their foster daughters. And we're going to talk about them in a, in a little while. And this is a picture over here of their granddaughter, the little girl that inherited the house. Actually, she wasn't little when she inherited the house, but this is a picture of her as a young girl. Now, is this the young lady that got chased by Pretty Boy Floyd? Yes. All right. <laughs> what a history. Yes. Okay, now everybody's going to be interested in this beautiful pink marble bathroom. Yes, for some people this is their favorite room. And uh, it was so unusual at that time to have such an opulent bathroom. It was, again, part of the remodel, and it's, it's uh, done just to the nines. Um, we have gold fixtures here at the sink and at the bathtub, and we have a mirrored ceiling. The ceiling was painted, it's reverse painting, and then it, the, the panels were silvered over, over the painting. So the painting is actually on the back side of the glass? Yes, uh huh, and then uh, silvered over. It's well, this is just splendid. Now, coming down from the ceiling, down to something that's on the floor, is this a white fur a right, rug? Yes, a white fur rug. And uh, it's, it's just pretty elegant all the way around. Now, did Frank have something that's comparable to this? Yes, his bathroom is equally interesting, and I have a big surprise for you when we get there. All right, well, let's go to Frank's bathroom for the big surprise. 
Now we go down the connecting hallway here, and we uh, certainly change from the very feminine to the very masculine. Yes, this is a very different feel in here altogether, Barbara. Absolutely. And this might be a good time for me just to tell you a little bit about Frank Phillips. Okay. Um, actually, he was born in Nebraska. His family was homesteading there, but they ran into hard times, grasshopper, um, infestations and whatnot, and so they moved back to Iowa, and Frank grew up there on a farm. But he really didn't want to be a farmer, and he looked about, and he saw that the barbers in town got dressed up every day, were clean, and didn't have to do any farm work, okay. and he decided that he would go and become a barber. And by the time he was just a very young man, he owned all of the barber shops in the nearby town of Creston, Iowa. He left school when he was about 12 or 13 years old. That's all the formal education that he ever had. But he was a very astute businessman. And uh, one of the barber shops was actually below the bank. And as luck would have it, that was the bank that was run by John Gibson, Jane's father. Okay. Well, you can imagine what happened. He fell in love with a banker's daughter, mm -hmm. married her, and the father took him into the family business of banking. And Frank started out on his career selling bonds across the country. Um, he got to the um, St. Louis Exposition in 1903, and he talked to a Methodist preacher that had just come from Indian Territory and the talk was all about oil and the possibilities of making a fortune. Frank went back to Creston, talked to his father-in-law, and they came down and looked the situation over. And then I'm sure one of the secrets of an American success story is that they got other people to invest in their venture. <laughs> oh, so right. he came back with his money and his brother, Ellie, and they set about to drill for oil. The first three wells that they drilled came in dry, but the fourth was a gusher, and then the next 80 were gushers. So 81 oil wells in a row. No wonder he was so fabulously wealthy and could build this home when he was 35 years old. He had read the Horatio Alger books as a boy, and he was convinced that if he had the right opportunity, he could become a millionaire. This was the right opportunity. But you know, they also hedged their bets. They also went into banking. And, uh, I didn't know that. Yes, he and his brother, they befriended all the oil drillers, but they also befriended the outlaws. And that was why you had this remarkable incident of an outlaw helping Frank Phillips. Uh, they, Frank Phillips would lend money to anyone that could pay back. And uh, he was very well respected here in town. When he started, um, his business, they had different uh, different uh, corporate corporations, but in 1917 they founded Phillips Petroleum Company, and at that time their assets were about $235,000. And in 1950, when um, Mr. Phillips died, the assets of Phillips Petroleum Company were $650 million. I think that's a success story. Yes. <laughs> and if you're that successful, you get to use this bathroom every morning. That's right. All right, let's take a look at this. Well, Barbara, there probably aren't very many bathrooms that have a barber chair in them. I told you Frank Phillips was a barber to begin with, and yes. he had this uh, barber chair installed in his bathroom on this buffalo hide. And every morning he would have um, professional barber come and give him a shave and cut what hair he had left. <laughs> Great. Now this is a wonderful creation behind you. What is that? Well, it's uh, I call it a light box. There are little switches up here and you sort of like a sauna, although there is no um, moisture to it. You get in and you sit in this ch on this chair in this little room and you get nice and warm, perspire, and then Mr. Phillips, or Uncle Frank as we call him, would come out of there and have an osteopath come and give him an, an adjustment and a treatment every morning. So he would get nice and warm and loosened up here. The Phillips had lots of servants. They had nine servants that came every day. Um, Mr. Phillips every morning had, as I said, a barber. Then he had his osteopath. Once a week he had a manicure. 
He always had his breakfast up here in bed, and he had a personal valet and a secretary that was at his, a male secretary that was at his disposal night and day. Um, this is his shower, marble shower. This also was part of the remodel that was done under Delk's direction in the 30s. And here's a, his own little refrigerator for uh, refreshments, probably needed after his uh, Absolutely. little sweating there. And over here, I think it's kind of fun to note, is a place, a cigar, a cigar lighter for his cigars here. Everything and he could possibly want. Everything like. he could possibly want, his valet, and um, then this beautiful marble sink that's just so elegant. I'm almost speechless, <laughs> and that seldom happens. <laughs> it, these bathrooms really are fun. They are just really conversation pieces in the mansion. Okay, now we have on this floor still to look at the step uh, the foster daughters foster room. daughters yes bedroom okay okay so now this room is the room of the foster daughters that's and it's, right Barbara I, I would have loved this when I was growing <laughs> up and <laughs> three mirrors having dates and so forth absolutely oh here's their pictures uh, the Phillips had one natural child of their own John and Mrs. Phillips couldn't have any more children, so they decided to take foster daughters. And they went to New York and heard about these, they heard about a little girl. And when they went, the little girl's sister was in the room, so they took them both. And they, they changed their names and named them after, after them. One was called Mary Frances, and the other was called Sarah Jane. Wonderful. And they actually added this room or this larger part of the room onto the house when the girls came. Yes, right. three stories high. All right, well, I think it's appropriate that the girls should have a beautiful bedroom. And this is open and light, and of course, in warm Oklahoma summers, I'm sure this is a great bedroom. Just like a sleeping porch, only a, a little bit more elegant. Absolutely. Well, we have one floor left. That's right, the third floor. Let's go up there now. Barbara, this is the third floor. It's a recreation area, and the Phillips really used it a lot. You can see their ping pong table, their piano, their organ, and a card table to play cards. Uncle Frank used to come up here and have his onion sandwiches. And over here, I'd like to show you the butler's room. He came to the country with no money. And when he died, after working for the Phillips for a number of years, when they went through his personal effects, they found out he was a millionaire and worked for them because he liked them. He'd invested in the stock market. Wow, we have two great success stories here. That's true. Well, Sue, this is a wonderful home. We appreciate your taking us through it. Uh, and I hope all of our viewers will take an opportunity to come by and see you. When are you open? We're open Tuesday through Friday from 9 to 12 and 1 to 420. Actually open to 5 but we close, we last people at 420 and Saturday and Sunday 2 to 420. Okay, well we've just gotten to scratch the surface yes. of so many things that that people can see. For those of you at home, we appreciate your being with us. We hope you'll join us again for Focus on Art.